And he actually might out-survive some of these teams by doing so. Infantry will be the next ones to commit back to the boat and get across. Do whatever they can. DA can see Tracer Fire within the building. Just laying into metagaming from the opposing side. We hop back towards the north. We've got a three-way battle. STK, Petrocore Road, Oath Gaming just downwind of this. STK are in a 2-2 split, so they'll hold deeper angles further down towards the south. First nade comes out. Bale Frost will fall. The question is, do Petrocore try and advance on this one? They know they are being punished Ooh. from two different angles, and they have to be very, very careful for it. They could push up against the blue, which just denies one certain area they don't have to worry about. Then they can focus on players towards the south. STK, however, probably won't get too hyper-aggressive, given that they've split their resources between two different areas. Oh, no, wicked. That's not the way to be doing it on the rotate. And just look at the bullets. Every single person sees him. Actually, the one who gets the, the, the frag off to, in the end of it, which is kind of kind of wild, as you say. We still look got players... What year is this, Richard? I'm seeing like three teams in the water. I'm getting flashbacks. Oh, not, but not it good does, ones. It won't win you the game, though. Yeah, it's different these days. You don't get to win from the water anymore. But as said, Wicked's in there, Seer's in there, Inventory's in there. For now, though, Oath's still trying to deal with their problems in the north. This is ever raging, and Petrocore Road are no easy team to get past, right? Like, this is something you got to pay attention to. Now, Sparking has, has, has beached. The Wookiee comes flying out to merely be met by Buram. So that's sparking gone. So maybe it would have been the better choice to have a little, little dip. A little dip in the water. Bring yourself across. Long on top for now. Now, Oath team aware, but that's... It's a weird one, right? Because technically you're shooting down. So it's just you get the headshot almost for free. But Long, when he peeks his ridgeline, he is very vulnerable. But he's made it work for one. There's that headshot I'm talking about. It's dangerous playing these games where Long makes it work, but for only so long. He gets noted, and there he goes to DA. Petrocore Road goes down as a collective, and Oath stay alive. Now, they are in the circle. They will be able to stabilize, and DA is a name we will probably be saying later unless they make a meal of this one. Everyone else just has to try and scramble to their position. One of the strongest at the moment for this circle. Finally, VP. The safety net of the building that they've garnered for quite some time is now removed from them. I'd say it probably can't. Not really long for this world, much more to be fair. Doing whatever he can. Ultimately clutching at straws when you're up against the blue. He might just give it up at this point, to be honest. There's not a lot he really can do whatsoever. Zenith, I've, I've got to say, like, with resilience has been in their favor thus far. They had several teams continuously battling against them on the opposing side of and they've somehow made it off the island across the beachhead. And now to the foothills of DA. You do have to be careful because VP's still there. But VP, like, you've got this scenario where VP fires into DA. Then Zenith strikes at the perfect right time. We'll always have a constant conflict between a Freak of Freaks and Buram. Just because they are battling off the back of this bridge. Either side of it, it's quite a, a nice area to be taking residency in at the moment. Given that your back is completely safe. And we hop back on board with STK, still up towards the northern side, looking at Oath, but eventually they do have to wrap down. If they do wrap down, they hit this trifecta of teams, VP, DA, and Zenith, all of which now are going to be forced to move by the circle. I'm, I'm watching Buram, and honestly, if they make this through, now that would be fun for me. Now, we are seeing Act 5. Ooh, ooh, doo, 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 doo. this ain't fun. Pender tries to do the moves, and well, he does get knocked for it, but they at least get the flush, so they've picked up a little bit of a next kind of springboard position to work towards. So now we still have this scenario of, look how many teams are here. Oath, shoot to kill. Um, Birders Pro, of course. DA, Zenith, all around. Metralius with the switch out towards the SKS. Tap, tap, code mark. All we're going to find with two lins. Break comes out. Shinboy finally strikes. Now he gets one, but he's quickly traded out on. Now the rest of Zenith is a little lower down on this ridge, playing by the bottom side of the rocks. Going to try and relocate, readjust. No wide flank available, and Code Marco's going to attempt to go for the flush there. And the remainder, not quite on deck. Poonage is a little further towards the eastern side Ooh. of these rocks, as you can see there, in the smoke. And that nade's not bad now, is it? Oath's going to start going through. This looks like NA on NA action now. Just to be careful they don't step into the fire, because it is... 
Very well hidden, obscured by the smoke. VP comes in from the back lines, though. Follows up with the nades. So the smakers removed from play. Hyruzen hits the deck. One, two, thank you. The spray transfer is picture perfect. Bale Frost now to hold the line, but the bombardment will commence. Halo comes into play now, into focus. STK, re STK have realized what's going on, and VP has been eliminated just like that. What a response. It was a bit of a mix match, to be fair, between Orth and STK firing in to VP. So they got the blunt end of the stick from a, a third party. TA still have to get across this stop gap before getting to the circle. It's not the most barren of areas, so you do have some trees and obstacles that you can play off the back of, but still, with the elevation in the favor of Afrika Freaks and DXG, how difficult that will be, I do not know. Alright, so high percentage chances will be your DXG, Buram, and are Freak Freaks down to three? Yeah, okay. I'd say those are your three to watch right now. DA's positioning is pretty rough, as as we can see. So, eh, kind of putting them out of it. And now Buram are on eight kills. We said this about Buram, they're a team that if they've if they get to the right place, they, they play a wild game. Stylistically, it's hyper-aggressive. And speaking of aggression, here we go. Straight in, straight out. Shoot to kill is gone. And he's placed for them. And look, in this format, it's all about that win. It's all about that final player, final team standing. And okay, we're going to the beaches, Rich. Well, this gets a little bit interesting because there's no players inside that circle. This gets very, very interesting. And also puts Booboo Ram now. They're fantastic and very formidable position. Same goes for DXG. They all have to remove themselves from cover. They all have to remove themselves from these safety nets that they've been banking on so much. But this is a very low wrap. If that nade's good, it's better than good. It's absolutely banging. Two players will fall. And the big obstacle that was front and center of Booboo Ram to get by. They have made this look easy. The follow-up molly's good, and that should be a freak of freaks gone. That was so swift. That was a nade, bit of pressure. Molly. Okay. Buram. They're on the map. They removed one of the biggest wrecks. DXG is still alive, though. And I'd say DXG's position? Pretty strong, yeah. The new circle's a problem, but it's oh. very good. Oh, Wait. Now that's... Wait, 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 wait. That's a big boy yeah, just, up on the I bridge. I just caught for his position, and he's inside the circle, Lauren. Like, if he has to, he could always jump off that backwards and wrap down low where Buuram are to get to his teammate. Like, they could Bad. hold this with these long-range weapons up there. That's... I could really throw a spanner in the works. Here comes the push. Right, trying to get across. Let's see if they make it. And Andrada says no. That's one. Sprays in on the second. Nilti's still alive, but barely. They need to make their stand now. Buram can't re ah, I guess they feel confident enough after maybe a freak of freaks. They can let them get close. But look at this damage. 11 kills. 12 kills. Racking them up. And what we have left are the four teams. Meta with two. Infantry with one quietly in the background. TXU with three. One knocked. And Buram all four alive. But the circle will be... Pushing these players substantially closer. It's time to get going here. Look how compressed it is on this side, Rich. Hongskar eventually has to move from water. The downside to Buram is that they are very, very boxed in. Very, very bottlenecked here. Long KO pie, finally. The first shots will commence. They've already lost one player earlier on, but now this might be the go time. This might be the time to shine, especially if they've got all their utility. It's time to commit it to the cause. Buram have already done the same thus far by removing a Freak of Freaks and doing damage. That's a nice little dip, but it's answered instantly. God Meow goes back, and now Silzen and Co. It's time for them to join in. The bombardment has commenced. Buram and DXG both damaged. Longskur is going to remove himself from water, and he is behind enemy lines well and truly. A Navy SEAL just from the water peeking up has a look doesn't want to give away too much his position has not been noted to my understanding so Buram could be in for a terrible surprise Meta have to make their move they had been noted prior to now so Edie's gonna watch out for that finds one looks for the second just living in the smoke it looks like the molly's burning anyway Buram 15 kills now now there's two snakes and Longska still has not been checked on he's made it to the water now mini in hand 
Three players in front and one off to the side. He sees one. Oh my god, he's got all three of them right there. That's two. A third would be fantastic. And DXG will probably look going, wait, there's another? Where did he oh! just come from? Out of nowhere. The beast from the water emerges and now the 1v1 DXG probably baffled but IQ 500 trying to keep cool under pressure. Looks in, gets attacked with his own oh! answer right. But he's won it. He's only got a won it. Coming into this competition, we knew this man could do incredible things. Longsker bides his time in the water. Patiently, he waits for the right time to strike. Makes his way up. Decimates Bururam. Pound for pound, destroys them all. Takes the one versus one at a disadvantage when it comes to health. And ultimately wins it out and wins his team a spot in the grand finals. If you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and message me directly or comment down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and also check out my Facebook page. Bye.